You know, some of you behave as if persecution against the church is a new phenomenon. No, that was how the church was born. That was how the church spread at its earliest time. But you know what? The more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied. Everywhere they went, they didn't say, we have learned our lesson from Jerusalem. Oh, when you come into the foreign city, please, the thing you did in Jerusalem that made them persecute you, don't go and do it in a foreign land. That's why some of you went abroad. You went to Canada. You went to America. You went to the United Kingdom. You went to Rome. You went to Italy. And you have lost your fire because you thought you had escaped. God sent you. God sent you. God sent you. They went everywhere preaching the word. Meanwhile, they left because of persecution. The same thing they did in Jerusalem that brought them persecution. They went into foreign lands and continued doing the same thing. This was how the church multiplied. That is part of how you and I are sat here today. It's because of the missionary outward looking nature of the original recipient of this faith. Many of us are caved in on ourselves. We are only concerned about what God is doing for the church, what God is doing in the church, what is in it for me. And we are just doing rema upon rema upon rema upon rema. Yet, there is a world all around us that is looking for light. There's a world all around us that is perishing. How can people be so close to the river source and they die of thirst? Will we not at least offer it to them? Let it be their choice either to accept or to reject it. Let it be their choice at least to say no so that when they stand before God, it will not be the case that nobody offered it to them. There are people in your class that have never heard an intelligent, accurate presentation of the gospel. There are people that the only idea of Christianity they have is a wrong one and they formed it all by themselves. The gospel has never been clarified to any of them. Some of them can read but like the Ethiopian eunuch, they don't understand what they read. How will they understand unless somebody explains it to them? Michael that there will be men and women that are dreaded today. Some of them are still kingpins, kidnap kingpins. Yet, some of our highways, we know peace. We know peace. We know peace. If God will encounter one of them, then the church had rest. There was a season of rest. And that rest was accompanied with multiplication nonetheless. Then had the church's rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and were edified. So something was going on in the church. church was, the church was edified, walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost were multiplied. So there was discipleship going on inside and there was evangelism going on outside. When the original persecution, the initial persecution, when it had done its work, God curtailed it and there was a season of explosion, of growth, of multiplication. The church inside was developing, was maturing, yet they were evangelistic. Do you know there are many, many of you, you don't think that you know enough yet to be an evangelist. These were new converts. In the earliest days, as people were becoming believers, they became evangelists. How long were they Christians when they were scattered abroad? That they went everywhere preaching the word. Preaching the word. Preaching the word. Everywhere they went preaching the word. You may not know a lot. But I've told you. At least you should go out saying this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. I don't have so much rema. I don't have a lot of depth. I don't have a lot of revelation. But this little light of mine. I am going to let it shine. You may not be able to sing like angels. You may not be able to preach like Paul. But you can tell the love of Jesus. You can say he died for all.